In the name of the one God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. <clears throat> So, um, have you ever had an assignment you felt somewhat unqualified to complete? I bet every single one of us has, whether we're a student or a teacher or a business person. So in a way, that is how I feel about preaching on today's gospel. I mean, come on. It's a hard thing to think about losing our life to gain it. And if you know anything about the Enneagram, which is a personality type system which has both spiritual and um, psychological implications, you will know that quite often those who share my personality type, I am a seven, I've just revealed a lot about me to a few people in here, we tend to be motivated by avoiding pain. So I imagine avoiding pain is a relatively common motivator for many of us. Some of us just take it to another level. So on its surface, Jesus' teaching that we are to lose our life to gain it feels not only counterintuitive, but actually painful. 3,800 years before Jesus was even born, Abram was tasked by God to lose the life he knew. He and his wife, Sarai, were instructed to leave their home and community and venture off into strange and dangerous lands. Great faith was called forth from Abram and Sarai to go. They risked starvation and violence from other tribes, tribes when they followed Jesus's instruct, or God's instruction to go. 24 years later, Abraham and Sarah's faithfulness was rewarded. Isaac was born to them. Today, Abraham is considered the patriarchal lineage of the Jewish, Christian, and Muslim traditions. Therefore, they're called the Abrahamic traditions. Perhaps we can take heart in knowing as much as Abraham is revered, he had some significant missteps along the way. But most importantly, this Genesis story teaches that faithfulness is risky. It's risky. And it may take a long time for our promises from God to be fulfilled, but new life awaits those who are faithful. And God is with us every single step of the way. Risky faithfulness is at the crux of this gospel passage today. Peter standing in for all of us, all of us, come on, who think we know how life is supposed to go, rebukes Jesus for saying the worst thing Peter could imagine happening would happen, that Jesus would be crucified and die. And so Jesus rebukes Peter, and he would not stand down. He gathers more people around him and says, Look, you have got to lose your life to save it. Personally, I like my life. Do you like your life? You have a good life? I have a pretty good life. I mean, whether we have a good life or we don't have a good life, usually we like the life we have much better than the one we're not sure what it's going to be, right? It's kind of scary to not know. And yet following God has entailed taking dangerous risks from the beginning of time, a faith in God's divine benevolent presence does not shield us from heartbreak or pain or struggle. It assures us, no matter what, God will be our God. God will be with us. This assurance is a threefold blessing. First, no matter what we are going through, we are never, ever alone. Second, it gives us courage and strength to go beyond the comfort of our own lives in the service of others in the world. 
And third, it lays bare the truth that we are not really in control anyway. Father Gregory Boyle, some of you might know about Father Boyle. He wrote an incredible book called Tattoos on the Heart. I think he has other books as well. But for decades, Father Boyle has lived in LA working with folks who are gang members in order to help restore them to life not in gang world. He explains that the moment most gang members turn the corner and leave the gang life is when they believe in the unshakableness of God's love, that nothing they can do can make God not love them. And when that truth is integrated in the depth of their being, they are able to let go and turn toward new life. It is this point that they bravely let go of their gang life and seek a new way. We know this takes courage in an environment where leaving a gang could literally cost one their life. When everything is going great in our lives, like when things are going really well, we experience this idea of God's unshakable love for us on an intellectual level. It's kind of a nice thing that's out there. But when the crisis comes, when the crisis hits, that unshakableness of God's love is a lifeline. It becomes an emotional and spiritual lifeline. When the crisis comes, we are invited to grow up and drop the illusions that have prevented us from giving our whole lives over in love. When a beloved family member receives a hard diagnosis, or we lose our jobs, or a child is in trouble, we can grip as hard as we like, but there is no keeping the pre-crisis life. Nothing we can do. We can try, and ultimately, this gripping compounds the misery. The other option is to accept our lives as they are and surrender deeply into the scary, beautiful darkness of reality, offering the only things we have to offer, our love, our love to God, to one another, our love for ourselves, and our presence to be with, to be like God, to be with no matter what the strength to enter into and be with pain, our own and others, comes from faithfully trusting in God's unshakable love. I will be your God and you will be my people, no matter what. So as harsh as Jesus' rebuke of Peter was, it was a wake up call for Peter who was clinging to his vision of a triumphal victory. Jesus was inviting Peter to drop his agenda and to follow Jesus. When Jesus told the disciples that he would suffer and be killed, he did not end the prophecy there, did he? He also proclaimed that he would rise again, and he did, and so will we. John Claypool famously said time and time again, the worst thing is never the last thing. Like many of us, I still resist pain and giving up the known comforts of this life for the unknown gifts of following Christ. But the truth is, my trying to create a world where I am in control It causes its own version of suffering. Yes, we are to do the best that we can with what we have to create a better world for ourselves and for others. And we are to hold it lightly. 
with the understanding that we are not in control of everything. Uh, my former spiritual director, Sister Mary McGee, once told me, um, Mary B, you are not in control of the universe or even your own life. <laughs> that was shocking to hear. We are to be present in love with the reality of what is. So Frank Young, who worships here, recently forwarded an email to the clergy from Kate Bowler, who, if you know, do you, if, do, maybe some of you know who Kate Bowler is? All right, she wrote a book that has one of my favorite titles ever, Everything Happens for a Reason and Other Lies I Love. <laughs> So think about that one. She is a brilliant young theologian at Duke. And she has a friend, Stanley Hauerboss, who is a brilliant, more senior theologian at Duke. And they were having a conversation. And in this conversation, Stanley Hauerboss sums up what Jesus is saying quite well. The ability to live well is the, the ability to live without so many certainties. I'm going to give us that one again. The ability to live well is the ability to live without so many certainties. I would contend when we embrace uncertainty, we are a better conduit from which to receive God's love and grace and to be God's love and grace. We, lo we lose our construct of life, and we gain everything. So in conclusion, I am going to offer this prayer that was written by Kate Bowler in response to her conversation with Howard Voss. Let us pray. God, I come to you as I am. It is all I have really. And the next one I'm conscious of will be the same. I can feel the way I move moment to moment without the comfort of solutions. It seems wild to me now how I imagined any once and for all cure for this or a master plan to ensure things will work out. But truth be told, that's always been my secret hope. So, Lord, let's try again. I'm begging for a new plan. I want a plan that is an unplan. I must keep moving and planning, trying and changing, knitting my days together even as they unravel. So can we do this together? Remind me to pray. Come, Lord and quiet the worry. I step and you steady me. I give and you keep my hands open. I act and you fortify me with courage to try and try and try again. This life is uncertain, Lord, but your love is not. You tell the story of my life regardless of how little I know about how it ends except to say, you were there since the beginning, and you appear on every page. Amen. Amen.